Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today, I'm gonna be talking about is a coding bootcamp worth your money? The entry-level market for web developers continues to become more saturated. I mean, just take a look at the hiring outcomes. For example, Full Stack Academy. It's one of the top coding boot camps in the United States. It's something I went to. But right now, if you take a look at the statistics that are on their website, they mention that they estimate about 80% of their graduates will get a job within six months. Um, and that's in Chicago. In New York, it's down to about 70%. So that's six months worth of income. And the people that are usually getting those jobs within that six months and potentially earlier are people that are doing a lot of the right things. They don't lean on that coding boot camp and the knowledge they get from it being their only strength their only competitive edge. Um, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about other stuff that you can do to make yourself more competitive, but it's it's a brutal world in the entry-level market. It's, it's tough. Lack of knowledge isn't the problem when becoming a web developer. Anyone can attain that knowledge online for free. A coding bootcamp helps structure that knowledge and it helps give you more guidance, but you do not need a coding bootcamp to learn what you need to learn to become a web developer. Usually the problem is a lack of self-discipline. And so often when I talk to people that wanna get involved with the coding bootcamp, I ask why? And one of the main reasons is I want structured learning. Okay, great, why? Well, I've tried on my own and I can't seem to motivate myself. And when I hear that, my head just goes, Poof. you've got to be kidding me. You think that your lack of motivation isn't going to manifest itself in the coding boot camp? You think that your lack of motivation isn't going to burn you out when you get done. So you don't even wanna apply for jobs. You don't wanna code. You don't wanna work on projects because you are just so damn exhausted. Because guess what? You just got out of a coding boot camp. It's meant to do that to you. Address your lack of motivation first. And the one tip I would give for you for that, stop depending on motivation. Motivation will come and go. And you've probably seen this in other areas of your life but the number of times that I felt demotivated to work on my projects or learn a new concept, God, I probably way more than you, honestly. But what I did, no matter whether I wanted to or not, I got the damn job done. Even when I was struggling, even when I didn't really know what I should learn, I still tried. I still put the time into it. I still looked at tons of resources. I still tried to build, Guys, so many failed projects. I have phew, a graveyard of unfinished projects. It's ridiculous. But I tried, no matter whether I was motivated or not. And that's one thing you need to realize if you know you at least enjoy coding most of the time, you enjoy working on projects, you enjoy learning, you enjoy the challenges that coding brings, you enjoy those aha moments, Screw motivation, just do it. Stick to it every day. And then when you can actually code every day, no matter how frustrated you get, then you're probably ready for a bootcamp. Then when you build up that self-discipline, that self-discipline will manifest itself in that coding bootcamp. And what's gonna happen? You are going to get exhausted, you're gonna burn out, but you are still going to push through it. And not only are you going to push through it, you are going to have seen the results of pushing through that lack of motivation and be able to see way down the road in which no matter how demotivated you are, as long as you put the time into it, your knowledge is going to grow. It's going to show in your projects and it's going to show in your code. And you're going to already have seen that if you worked on that habit before you went into the coding bootcamp. Once in a while, I get someone that reaches out for a coffee date and I'm incredibly impressed with it because it shows that they're willing to put themselves out there, they're willing to network, and they're willing to build connections, which is very powerful in getting that first position. And so I'm gonna give you a few tips that I usually give most of the people. Uh, there are some pieces of advice that are tailored to what they're trying to achieve or kind of 
their strengths or their weaknesses, but mostly these tips are pretty universal. No matter whether you get out of a coding boot camp or not, you go the self, uh, self taught path. So continue learning, right? Let's say um, you feel like you know enough, you're never gonna know enough, you just continue learning. As you are applying for jobs, as you are trying to get into the industry, you continue working on projects, you let the blockers from those projects or the aspirations or ambitions of future projects influence what you wanna learn. You continue learning and put majority of your time into actual coding. And so, coffee dates. So, I brought this up for a reason because while this is very impactful for just networking in general, um, I think it's very effective when you apply to a company, the culture speaks to you, or maybe something they did, an accomplishment, their vision speaks to you. That is a good starter for a conversation with a developer on their team. Just say, you know, I'm trying to get into the industry and I'm sure most developers can empathize with how competitive and hard it was for them, uh, but I'm trying to get into the industry. Um, I'd love to buy you coffee, just pick your brain. Um, you know, I'll, I'll keep it short, but I'd really appreciate your time. Um, it could be as small as that. You can tailor it to your own personality, whatever, but just reach out and be kind about it, right? And be respectful of their time. And most of the time, developers will take a bit of their lunch to help you out. So reach out and that can kind of be a bit of an in for that company, right? If it's a good personality fit between you two, that could be a potentially good cultural fit for the company. And so, you know, that can definitely bring your resume up to the top if you've previously applied, especially if they're the ones that have asked you if you apply to their company. I think that's a really good signal. But just go into those conversations to learn and no more expectations of that, make a connection. If something more happens, um, or you just feel like you guys really vibe and you'd love to work with them, then you can kind of talk more about like, hey, so you know, what could I do to be more competitive you know, with everyone that's applying for this position? Um, and it kind of just drops the hint that, you know, I'm interested in your company, and if they want you aboard, they're really gonna help you out. So uh, coffee dates, it's just another way to network, but. Another way is meetups. Meetups are fantastic, especially if you go to kind of a networking focused meetup. Maybe a larger meetup that has an event and networking afterwards, or um, if you can find a meetup that hosts a hackathon, that's really powerful because very often you're gonna have recruiters and companies there to check out some of the top projects. Um, hackathons are phenomenal in getting your first position. Uh, but let's say, you're like me, right? Um, I started streaming on Twitch and I was live coding about two years ago. I knew nothing, but I got my name out there a little bit because I was I showed that I was passionate about coding. I showed that I loved helping people uh, learn how to code. I showed I, I liked working uh, or building projects with other people. And um, I just, I loved coding and like every bit of that personality showed in my live streams. And so I put myself out there and it was a little bit of building my own self branding. And I think that's a very powerful thing to do um, as a developer, not when, just when you're starting, but when you continue growing your career um, and kind of just how much you're worth. I think it's very powerful. So maybe you don't want to do live streams, but maybe you enjoy writing. Maybe you enjoy um, taking pictures. You can take very creative pictures and they could be inspirational pictures that you put on Instagram. Um, just thoughtful posts on LinkedIn. Like just get your name out there, show your process and show how much you love, uh, so like process of coding and growing as a developer and show how much you love coding. Um, show that you wanna help others out, you kinda of wanna give back. I think uh, that's a very admirable trait, but just kinda of like, whatever you're learning, put it out there. Talk about your journey and talk about what you've learned and if people ask you questions, well, they, which they probably will, answering those questions in a kind manner, um, I think is very, um, it just helps your personal brand. I know maybe some of you are thinking, well, that's kind of like a salesman thing to do. It's really selfish to look at it that way. But you know, you probably are a really good person, a really passionate, amazing person in here, and no one sees that, right? So what I'm saying to do is voice your process and whatever way feels best to you, let other people hear you, show your personality, 
and then you're gonna start realizing that it's a little bit easier to make connections that some people are trying to connect with you because they really admire what you're doing or they really vibe with your personality so um, if you like writing blog uh, if you like creating videos do that but those are some pretty useful tips that are gonna help just you stand out because you'd be surprised at how few people will actually follow through with some of these tips because they're either too shy or they just they just don't for whatever reason. So take advantage of these. So is a coding bootcamp worth your time in 2019? If so, how do you make it worth your time? Now, I want to say this right away. 99% of coding bootcamps are not worth anyone's money. In fact, I would call many of them scams. And so, something to keep in mind, coding boot camps are business at the end of the day. Every single one of them would not be standing if they weren't there to make money. That's a fact, right? So, when you decide that maybe a coding boot camp is right for you, a couple things to consider. Look at the reputation of the coding boot camps. So you can find honest reviews of boot camps at uh, Course Report. Course Report is a phenomenal resource and it's very trusted across the community. Uh, but look at the reviews, make sure they're highly rated. Um, look at, you can even look up on LinkedIn for people that currently have developer jobs, they're in the industry and they came from a coding boot camp. That's pretty easily searchable on LinkedIn. Look at the hiring outcomes um, and really take into account how much money it's gonna cost. Now, here's the thing. I, I think you're probably gonna be tempted to go for the cheaper route because it's less risk or you might go for a part-time route where you can do on the side of your job that's very uh, low risk, especially because it doesn't cost a lot. Um, you might just basically try to cheapen out on this education and here's where I'd recommend you don't even consider that. If you aren't going to go to a coding boot camp, go to a top coding boot camp. If you do not get in, you build your skills up until you get in. That is the only way I would ever recommend anyone go to a coding boot camp. They go to that top 1%, they do whatever it takes to get in. A lot of people will fail the application process one, two, three times and then eventually get in on the fourth, but that shows initiative and it shows drive and it shows self-discipline. We talked about that. That's huge and that's what a lot of these top coding boot camps are looking for because you got to think like if they're publicly showing their outcomes, they want to bring potentially successful candidates in, go all the way through, and make them look good at the end. So go for a coding bootcamp that has a very rigid and strict application process. And make sure it's, if it's a top coding bootcamp, it's gonna cost a lot. I would estimate it costs probably about fifteen to $17,000. Uh, I'd say maybe like fifteen dollars to $20,000 in that range. And so if you don't have that money ready or going into financial debt in order to jump into this education, um, if you're in that stage of life right now, I would recommend you don't do it. Financial debt can eat people alive um, even after a coding bootcamp. So if you are really dedicated into growing as a developer and you wanna get into the industry, there is nothing wrong with and if you're really committed to, go to going to a coding boot camp, continue teaching yourself until you save up, you know, a good, you know, 50%, 75% of the money or where you can actually justify the expenses of not having a job for 6 to 12 months after the coding boot camp. And I think that's kind of the real thing. Um, and that, that's probably one of the most important things that I recommend to people is you need to be able to support yourself six to 12 months after that coding boot camp of not having any job whatsoever because you are going to be coding nonstop. Um, you're probably gonna be putting eight to 12 hours into just continuing on with projects, learning new things, uh, networking, the job application process, and going through interviews and all of that. So you need to, Estimate, okay, coding bootcamp might take only three months, but no, you better estimate um, maybe a full 12 months of no income whatsoever. When you are ready for that step financially and you want to accelerate your learning, that's when I'd recommend that you go to a coding bootcamp. And that is the only time I would. 
Um, and I say this because I, I honestly do care about you. I see so many people that dive into debt and it just like, it eats them alive. I was in that situation in my past and it, it sucks. It's a really, uh, it feels like a heavy weight on top of you. And you just, like if you go through a coding boot camp, it's stressful. Now you have to get a job because you've just increased your debt. And so it'll show in your interviews that you're stressed and like, you know, it kind of snowballs a little bit. So you want to be in a good, healthy, uh, mentally and physically uh, healthy position when you decide to take that next step. And I think it's going to help you learn better. It's gonna help you retain what you're learning and that will uh, help kind of like reinforce your passion, your confidence as you grow as a developer and that'll show in your interviews and that's when you're gonna shine. So you, I really think you need to be in a good financial uh, and mental position to attend a coding bootcamp and make sure it's one of the top coding bootcamps. Otherwise, don't waste your money. Continue growing for free as a developer and I promise you there are resources out there. But, um, you know, it's not for everyone. But if you have any other questions about a coding bootcamp, if you're situation specific and you kind of just want to uh, get a feel for what I think, uh, whether you should take the leap or not, definitely leave a comment below and happy to help you out. So thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.